Hey, how's it going? So today we are going to cover permobile chairs and specifically the programming for memory position seating. Now, setting this up is fairly straightforward. However, getting the memory positions to actually save and be recalled from the joystick can be a little bit tricky depending on how old or what year your chair is. I was debating even making this video because there's a bit of confusion around it. But programming permobile chairs involves a little bit of black magic sometimes. The way their seating system works inherently has kind of a few idiosyncrasies to it. Their ICS module, which is the intelligent seating control module, is literally spoofing a regular RNET seat controller. So there winds up being a few little strange incompatibilities, and that's why I always say never use the RNET software to make any seating setting adjustments on a permobile chair. Now there is a prerequisite involved to make any of the changes we're gonna talk about today. Your chair has to have onboard programming enabled or you have to have access to one of these USB RNET dongles. This works like a hardware key for this setup. We're basically gonna plug it into the chair, turn it on, and that'll get us into onboard programming. But if you have that enabled already, you won't need this and you can use the button sequence, which we'll cover here in a minute, and that'll take you right into onboard programming. So either this or the setting enabled and you're good to go. So here we have a 2018 Permobile M3. This chair has the PJSM joystick. It's the one like this that has four soft keys. There's another variant that has two more buttons right here. The process is gonna be roughly the same with this, but this is the particular one we're gonna be using today. So what we're gonna do is start it up by entering onboard programming. And to do that, you press and hold power and horn at the same time until you hear a beep, then let go of horn and continue holding power, and then it will boot up into onboard programming, which looks like this. And now you can see here, we've got all the different menus for onboard programming. And you can see here, there's a bunch of different options. You use the joystick to scroll back and forth through all of these. But what we are interested in here is the one that says ICS. So you wanna scroll down to that and then push to the right to go into that menu. Then there's gonna be another list of things here. We wanna use the second option, which is seat icon display order one. So down to that and then to the right to select. Now, if you look really closely here, we can see on the side, there are some faint gray numbers. There's elevator, tilt, recline, leg rest. And then there's six other options here, recall memory one through three and save memory one through three. This chair does not currently have memory positioning enabled. So what we wanna do is scroll down here to recall memory one, and we're basically gonna change all of the values that are currently zeros to some very specific numbers. Now, depending on how the chair is set up, recall memory one may already have a number in there, but we can roughly disregard that. Printed out here on a picture that has a lot of dirt on it, as you can see, these are the numbers we want to enter in. 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, and 16. So I'm gonna go through these one at a time, and what you'll do is highlight the one you wanna change, recall memory one, currently says zero, and we're gonna use the speed paddle here, the rabbit and the turtle, and we wanna set this to 10, according to our sheet here. So we're gonna press up on this 10 times, and you can see that number there changes as we press up. For some reason, some chairs will let you press and hold, and they'll go through them quickly, this one does not, as you can see. So we just have to press the, press the toggle that many times. Okay, so recall memory one is set to 10. Let's go down to two, and we're gonna set that to 11. There we go, that's 11. Recall three is 12. There we go. And then save memory one is 14. Down to save memory two, 15. And finally, save memory three, kind of hard to read, but that is 16. There we go. Now we've got this all done. 
Let me zoom out here just a little bit so you can see the, the color of the ICS seating switches here. What we're gonna do is back out of this menu all the way to the main drive screen. So keep pressing left until we're back here. Now keep an eye on these lights. Just don't touch anything, let it sit for a minute. These are gonna turn red. They're gonna start doing the flickering. Then they're gonna go out. You'll get some errors on the screen. You can completely ignore that. Just let everything settle. And then when the lights turn back on and they're all green again, go ahead and turn your chair off. Give it about five to 10 seconds or so. Then we're gonna power it back on. There we go, we have our green lights down here. Now, just as a note, this chair has elevation, recline, and tilt. It does not have power legs. That's why this square over here is not lit up. But if we go into seating mode now, you can see here we've got the icon for the seat lift, then we've got recline, then we have tilt. Now, if we keep going, we're gonna see one that says M1. That's memory position one. Memory position two, and memory position three. Then if you keep going, it's just gonna to toggle back through all of the seating functions again. So now that we have this enabled, this is where things can get a little bit tricky depending on how old the chair is and which model it is. And also on some of these chairs, they have what they call independent repositioning mode. And that is going to occupy one of your memory position settings. You have a total of three available, but depending on the chair, if independent repositioning mode is enabled, you're only gonna have two. Now, once again, this is where things get a little bit confusing. So you'll have to kind of do a little bit of checking and figure out how your chair specifically is set up. But we're gonna go ahead and save memory position one here. Now, what I like to do on my chairs is save memory position one as my normal just driving position. It's the amount of tilt and recline and elevation that I use just when I'm running around normally. That way, you know, if I'm leaning back doing pressure relief, I'm reclining, got my feet up or whatever. Sometimes after doing that for, you know, half hour, an hour, something like that, it's hard to tell when you're back in your normal driving position. So I found it's really handy to save your actual standard driving position into memory one. So what we're gonna do here is make sure our chair is currently set up in the position that we want. And then we're going to pull backwards on the joystick and hold for a few seconds until the color changes. There we go, the color went away and you can see there's a little arrow there now. Now to finish saving this, you wanna push forward and hold. The seat lift may start operating, but as soon as the screen changes, just let go of the joystick. There we go. Now this is where things are a little bit confusing. The older chairs didn't do this, but that position should now be saved. Let's verify that's actually been saved. So I'm gonna tilt the chair back a little bit Use the buttons to do that. There we go. And now we're gonna go back into seating mode and activate memory one and see if it goes into that position. So we wanna go through the menu here until we get to M1. There it is. Now press and hold. And when you do that, the chair will start moving. You have to hold the joystick forward until it's completely done getting into that memory position setting. Sometimes it'll overshoot and then it'll come back a little bit. But here's what that looks like. So you can see that it went a little bit far and now it's coming back. And there we go. Now we're in our regular driving position. Now that we have memory position one saved, we can go ahead and go in here and maybe we want to save one for sort of a pressure relief. So let's go ahead and tilt the chair back a ways here. Then let's put a good amount of recline on it. Okay, so let's assume that this is the position we want to use for pressure relief. Again, this chair does not have power legs, so we can't illustrate that here. But depending on whichever actuator you put in whatever position you want, it's going to save all of them. And on these chairs that are about 2017 and newer, which actually the F3, M3, M5, and F5 all have the smart actuators on the seat lift, so the position or the height position of the chair will be saved as well. Now that we have the chair set up in another position that we want to use for pressure relief, for example, we're going to go back into the seating and go over to M2. So you can see that says M2 down there. Same process as before. We're going to hold backwards on the joystick till the color goes away and a little arrow appears. There we go. Now we're going to press forward 
And when the screen changes, let go. Again, things might start moving, just ignore that. There we go, the screen changed. So let's verify and see if that has actually saved or not. It's kind of a strange glitch with these newer chairs. I don't really understand what's going on with it. And I've talked to a few other people that work on these things quite a bit. And for whatever reason, it just starts activating the seat lift if you have one, but it does still save. So let's go back into seating mode here. Then let's go into memory position one. There we go. And you can see here the chair is reclined and tilted and everything. So we're in memory one, so let's go ahead and press and hold. Now the chair will begin to move back into that position. And there we go, normal driving position. To see if memory two saved, we'll go over to memory two and press forward on it. Once again, holding the entire time. Starts reclining and tilting. And there we go, we're in memory position two. And then also we have one more memory position three. There we go, and you can save that as well. I'm just gonna do the two, it's the same process no matter what you wanna do, but you can get up to, if I can do this, up to three <laughs> memory positions saved with a regular Permobile chair. Now when it comes to this whole memory position thing, there is one kind of oddity you have to remember. The chair is going to get within about 15% of the overall position. So if, for example, we're holding forward on this and we're having it just into a memory position and you get really close to it and you accidentally let go of this, if you press it again, it may not go the rest of the way. So right now we're sitting in the normal driving position, which is memory one. And as you can see, if we push the joystick forward, nothing happens. Now what if we tilt the chair forward just a little bit? Not that much. We're gonna press forward and see if it goes back. Nope, doesn't do it. Let's go a little more. Still doesn't do it. So as you can see, when you're roughly within 15% of the overall distance of that memory position, the chair is going to ignore any inputs. So if we go way far, let's tilt all the way down here. There we go. Now that should be far enough that when we activate memory position one, it will go back to that position. And there we go, you can see it's moving. The trick with this is making sure that you hold on the joystick until the chair is completely into that position. If you let off early and press again and it's anywhere close to it, it may not actually in, land you in the position that you think you're gonna be in. It's gonna be close, but just one little caveat there. So there you go. That is the extreme basics of turning on and or enabling the Permobile memory position function out, fun, fun, functionality <laughs> words. Just so you know, other RNET powered chairs may have memory position saving, but it's gonna be nothing like this. This is a specific to Permobile with their ICS module. All of their actuators, whether they're smart or not, well, except for the seat lift on chairs that are older than like 2015, they all have positional awareness, so they know exactly where they are. And that's what enables this to work. Now, if you get too old, like back into the 2G seating, it's not gonna work the same. This is specifically for 3G seating and currently applies to the newest chairs that they still make. Now, there are a bunch of other sort of advanced things you can do. You can use the ICS buttons on the chair to recall the memory positions without using the joystick. That requires something called boot up ICS programming or button combination programming. Now, at this point, I'm not really comfortable making a video on how to do that because it is very easy to screw up your chair and make it do, basically have a bunch of undesirable things happen if you get it wrong. It's, it's one of those things that I might eventually make a video, it's gonna be pretty in depth, but I just wanted to cover the basics on how to get it enabled on your chair. And this method should work on pretty much any Permobile that's been made from about 2017 or newer. We'll say specifically the F3, the F5, the M3, and the M5. Those all have all of the actuators that are compatible with memory positioning, including the seat lift, if you have one. And there you go. Finally made the video on how to enable Permobile memory seating. 
Just so you know, the way I make videos kind of has a lot to do with my energy levels, how I'm feeling and whatnot. As I'm sure a lot of you are aware, some days are better than others and sometimes certain function levels are better than not. So for me right now today, it just happened to work out that I could come out here and make this video. Now, there is obviously a lot of irons on the fire and I know a lot of people are waiting for other videos and products and things to be for sale and you know videos to come out and whatnot. But just so you know, I am working on everything and it's basically being done at the pace that I can handle. So I'm not sure why I felt the need to say that, but I'm gonna be making some more programming videos. We're probably gonna start off with Permobile because they are so confusing and I seem to have a handle on most of the things and have run across a lot of the little glitches and things that exist. Other programming is a lot more in depth and requires a lot more work to make the videos, including screen capture and software and stuff like that. One of the main reasons I wanted to make this video, however, is we've spoken about memory positioning on previous live streams and in other videos. Permobile has two videos themselves. One of them's about eight, six or eight years old and the other one's over 10 years old. And it's on previous versions of the electronics. And if you follow those videos and follow their directions verbatim, it's not gonna work correctly. So I just wanted to publish a newer video that applies to the newer chairs. And once again, this is the F3, the F5, the M3, and the M5. Those are the only ones that are applicable. The process may be the same for other chairs, but we're just gonna stick with those four because I know for a fact, everything is gonna be the same that's in this video. So anyways, there you go. Hopefully you enjoy. My arm's getting tired because this camera's heavy. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one or something. Thanks for watching.